you're just saying that because you want to get back at him or you want to go on TikTok and make him out to be a villain. And it's like, there's got to be some consequences to these women that you just can't go around smashing, you know, or defaming somebody, ruining somebody's life because you feel like, you know, women, because we listen to women and we always assume that they are the victim. But why can't it be that the men are the victim? Because women we know are, they can be underhanded, lie, they are very manipulative. <laughs> so, and they will make up lies just to make themselves feel better about the situation. I have had cases, I mean, you're talking about dating and teenagers and so forth, right? But I have had cases with married couples that they're falling apart and the accusation of assault is made and that he forced me to have sex with him. I did not want to have sex with him. I wanted a divorce. And how, where do you draw the line on that? There was sex, there, there was penetration, there was touching, and she's claiming after the fact that it was non-consensual. She fe felt mentally pressured to keep him happy, to stay under the roof because he's rich. I couldn't be on the street. I felt like I had to do it. I hear these stories and I'm like, I don't know that I can do anything for you. I, you know, it's, it's scary. It's scary. Cause I have to subscribe my name to that too. Right. I have to cherry pick what I take. Don't you also think that it's important for women to, as we're raising girls to grow up, use your voice, you know, have agency over your own self. Don't feel pressured into doing something. Cause I know sure. there's a lot of cases in the gray area. So it's also like, well, you know, if you are screaming and they're still doing it, obviously that's clear. But if you're just staying because you feel like you should just be quiet and get it over with, that's, you got to speak up, right? Or I don't know that it counts. 100, you, you make a very good point, which is, you know, how to get yourself out of that situation so that you don't have to have the regret or the, the dissonance that happens after the fact, like, what was I thinking? You know, and this is one of the reasons why I, um, I don't subscribe to the, to the party culture, notwithstanding all the cool cases I deal with. I'm a pretty you know, chill guy in my personal life. I don't, I don't go to crazy parties. I get invited to the craziest things. I don't go to these things because I don't know what's going to happen there. Um, unless every single person sign an NDA, I'm not going to be there. Right. <laughs> so, right. I so, agree. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's just a fact. If you are in a situation where something like that can happen, you're asking for it. If you haven't protected yourself, when I say you're asking for it, what I'm saying is you're asking for problems. And, um, I absolutely 100% Men and women need to be educated on how to say no, when to say no, how to get out of situations, how not to get into situations. Um, and it's it today's culture, we're hypersexualized to begin with. Like you can't have a cup of coffee with someone without thinking, I'm trying to get in your pants. It goes both <laughs> yeah. ways. We're just getting and awake first with the coffee. <laughs> It's hypersexualized okay. and overly sensitive and they just, <laughs> yeah. it like clashes so bad. It yeah. Right. Okay. Let's go. Let's pivot back over to this case. Okay. So I know you probably went through and read about it. So um, give us your, you know, legal advice on what do you see about this case, about this guy who's suing these 27 women for this illegal or for the secret Facebook group? So um, let me preface this by saying, so as a lawyer, you know, I'm very critical of lawsuits because I get to be, I'm a lawyer. This is what I do for a living. I've been doing this for 14 years. Um, I don't want to talk trash on lawyers, but they did file a public document and it's subject mm -hmm. to criticism because it's litigation. I like to think of this as the scale, what I call the dog shit scale. Let's just break this down. Right? The dog <laughs> shit scale I like is it already. <laughs> Raiz's version and way of measuring how good or bad your case is. So on one extreme end, we have I don't know, chihuahua turds, right? You could flick them and they disappear, like not a big deal. <laughs> oh, I was another like, wait, what? Extreme, <laughs> another extreme is like, I don't know, St. Bernard crap, right? Like okay. I don't know, when I think of a, a big dog shit, I think St. Bernard, yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. That's just, yeah. this, this lawsuit, this is my unfiltered, honest opinion. This lawsuit is dinosaur. It's not even... In, in, in the dog scale, it's dinosaur. It's not, yes. it's not well put together. <laughs> it's just not, I'm sorry. I feel bad for Nico Ambrosio, like for a millisecond. And then I really don't feel bad for him because he sounds like a big crybaby. He sounds like a privileged, you know, like gigantic 
crybaby. I looked at his picture. I read, I read the text messages. You, anybody can read the text messages that he's suing over. I shouldn't say text, but the, um, the Facebook post. Yeah. Okay. Um, and this guy is just a little bitch. He just really, <laughs> I, don't, okay. I, I was thinking yes. of the legal terminology and I'm like, you know yeah. what? Your podcast listeners are going to appreciate this so much more if I keep it real. He's just a yeah, little bit, yeah. I don't know. Like, so um, we agree uh, on what this looks like is yes. what you're saying. Regular people can suss this out without having a law degree. Dude, I, like, like if, yeah. if someone <laughs> accuses you of being clingy, that's not defamation. If you have hurt feelings because somebody says you're clingy, you probably are clingy. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, you might be borderline personality disordered, but. <laughs> no, and, and, and here's, here's the funny thing about this. Okay. I haven't dissected the entire lawsuit surgically like I would if I was defending or if I was prosecuting this case, right? If I was plaintiff side. But to me, the first thing jumps out at me is look at this list of girls. How many of them did you have personal interactions with? How many of them are just stating opinions? Remember we talked about to be defamation, it has to be a statement of fact. Right. Okay. Um, among other elements, right? He doesn't even meet. He doesn't even meet that prong. I don't think even that initial prong of, of a false statement of fact. The other problem with this lawsuit. So just to give you your listeners like a high level, right? So this guy's filing a lawsuit over, you know, like thirty defendants because he feels that on this this platform are we dating the same guy? That these girls are going ham and ruining his reputation. He's seeking some absurd figure in damages, right? Um, I don't remember if it's 75 million or 5 million, something oh crazy. God. Either way, it's <laughs> either way, yeah. either way. Um, and I'm going to tell you, I don't know if you guys knew this. He files this lawsuit. Okay. In five seconds of looking at the complaint, I can see the dog shit. It's very clear. I can five seconds. And I'll tell you exactly for any of your listeners who are lawyers, I'll tell you exactly what the dog shit is. But the even funnier part is, I looked at this and I said, he didn't even plead something as basic as jurisdiction correctly. It's the first five paragraphs of his complaint. Jurisdiction is not pled correctly. How is he in federal court? I checked the docket, which shows what's going on in the case. The case yeah. got dismissed the first time he filed. He filed the case twice. First time he in filed. In federal it. court the first time in as well? federal court, you need to have, he alleged what's called diversity, jurisdiction. He's saying... Nobody lives in the same. Okay, that's state. what I was wondering. Is diversity? N yet in the complaint, he's pleading that they're all domiciled in Illinois. So how that <laughs> happened? He missed it. The, the court was like, "You can't do this." The court actually threw the guy a bone. I've litigated in in Northern District in, in Illinois Federal Court before. Very good judges. The judge threw him a bone and said, "Look, if you have a class action, potentially you could get over this issue." What does he do? The same day he filed lawsuit two, or his lawyers filed lawsuit two, changed it to a class, saying that, and remember, class is the plaintiff's side. He's, He's only saying, one. How can he? Exactly. He's saying there are many people <laughs> in my situation who are getting dogged online and hurt feelings and small nuts, and we need to get our, you know, and and so um, it's just terrible. Here's the here's the here's the other big dog shit part of this. He sued Facebook and all of Facebook's holding companies and, and insulin, <laughs> which is comical. Good luck with that, buddy. <laughs> yep. Again, um, for everyone listening, you cannot sue Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, uh, you know, Twitter, uh, name any online platform, Reddit. You can't sue them for other people's statements. It's been federal law right. for decades. It's called Section 230, Communications mm -hmm. Decency Act. Oh, we know a lot oh, about know, that oh, Well, we know. I don't know if our oh, listeners know that. Experts, right? Oh, I didn't mean to make you stop yeah. saying it. I was just- No, no, no. But yeah. the, the, the point is that statute's actually arguably applicable to the Facebook group itself, never mind the bigger picture mm -hmm. Facebook. Right. So even yeah. the admins can't be sued for other people's comments. I'm looking at this complaint. I'm like, somebody who's a defendant hire me on this case so I can get this case slapped and get you your attorney's fees and you can make some money on it because that's what I would do. And yeah, I think yeah. there's a, a greater likelihood than not. And it's, I don't know if any of these lawyers, any of these 
defendants have lawyered up and filed anything. So far, I didn't see. But I would love to just bite into this lawsuit, get this smacked, make this guy look like a complete idiot. So you know, maybe we should maybe you should explain there's anti-slap and slap law too, right? Or it's so, a um, it's an argument that you can make when someone actually defames you or puts a case against you, right? So maybe you should explain what that is. So yes, and I've been on both sides of this. And to be frank, I've learned I've 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 had cases I've had one case in my career dismissed based on anti-slap. So I'm very familiar with it. Slap is the well let's talk about anti-slap it's easier this way anti-slap is just an acronym right slap strategic lawsuits against public participation fancy way of saying you are suing me to silence me on an issue of public concern that's all that means so in order to be to fall into the anti-slap defense it's a defense motion it has to be something that's protected free speech okay now most states have anti-slap rules, n- statutes. Not every anti-slap statute is the same. In Arizona, for example, we amended ours uh, about a year ago, year and a half ago. It has more teeth. Before, anti-slap only applied if you were literally petitioning to the government for something, and during that petition, you were defamed. Most popular cases, if you're at a zoning board hearing and somebody says, you know, your, your uh, bar is really uh, a whorehouse, and you don't get zoning to have a liquor license, et cetera. That is an example of where you could not sue over that because it's happening during the process of petitioning the government. Okay. The anti-slap we're talking about here is when people make statements that are public opinion, which is free speech issues of public concern, which is protected speech, other statements that are not, you know, based in fact that have some public interest. Okay. In those cases, anti in statutes that have that language, anti-slap has a lot of teeth. Very, very strong. California is probably the number one in the country. Nevada is number two, right? New York is probably number three. Florida is also really good. Um, other states are, are relatively weak. Like Michigan's is not that strong. So my point is, if I was a defendant, and I'm being sued, if I'm, if I'm an admin, um, I am saying, first of all, I didn't, I'm not the speaker. I'm not the publisher. I, I gained protection because I'm just an admin in this group. I didn't even say anything. And that alone is a sufficient defense. Facebook has a very strong defense. I mean, you don't need to do hardly any research. You could go to Google, and just say suing Facebook. And the first link is probably my law firm, which will say section 230. Um, so none of these platforms are going to get dinged. He tried, the lawyers did like a good sophomore attempt to maneuver around it. Um, it's facially defective. You know, it's just not going to work. Well, I think he, he just got a lawyer that just wanted some money. It's a money grab, right? For the lawyer. Just well, like, hey, I'll, I'll take your money if you want to sue. Because you can sue anybody Or is anything. the lawyer think he's onto something and he's not paying, he's doing it pro bono? That's well, I, I mean, wonder. but also I'm like, then you don't understand Section 230 and you don't understand the First Amendment. Or, or I think it goes back to where it's like they have the right to say certain things as long as they're not defaming somebody, right? Right. And so I think it's like he just got a lawyer that just was like, fine, I'll take your money and we'll sue whatever. Well, my yeah, question, I have a question that sort of yeah. ties into what Crystal just said and what you said also. I understand that in this case, the social media platform is covered under Section 230. Is Are the actual women, the admins of the group that you mentioned, are they also covered under that or is that only apply to the companies? Very good. Very good question. So there's a little nuance there. The admins of the group, arguably the we could analogize Facebook and the actual group to be the same. So all of the admins should arguably get section 230 protection in addition to anti-slap protection. The key thing here is unless the exception of course, is if the admins are writing something that's defamatory, you're not insulated just because you're an admin of a group. Right, right, right. But just by adminning the group and maybe liking a comment or something, they're, they're protected as long as they're not participating in actual defamation, correct? I agree. I agree. Okay. I agree. And I have these cases where people come to me and the admins, sometimes it's a little gray. You know, they are commenting, 
and they might be acting in furtherance or republishing things like that are old and right. saying, oh, bring me this back. There's some gray area, but this is not gray area. Like in the lawsuit, right. show me something false that's a statement of fact that actually damaged your reputation. Right. I don't it's probably see it. I don't see it. The dating 25 women is what damaged your reputation. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I want to tell you something. You're going to laugh. I don't know if you guys know this. Literally, you can't make this up. A week after this guy filed this lawsuit, he was found guilty of tax fraud. He was <laughs> prosecuted oh the guy was convicted that means it went before a jury oh my god so he arguably is con is a convicted felon right he's already a criminal <laughs> and then he's filing this dumbass lawsuit he, a federal uh... jury convicted this guy of tax evasion which allegedly occurred in 2019 and 2020 for lying on tax returns this is even funnier again you can't make this up where he claimed that he made as little as $4,000 in a particular year when he documents show he made over $300,000 with the company called Mac T LLC. You can look this up, which specializes in sweepstake machines. I don't even know what a sweepstake <laughs> machine is. That like a, oh is that like the lotto buttons God. you push? Like the uh, slot machines and like, stuff? Like, this, no, that's like, those are lotto machines. <laughs> what the hell does here, that even mean? Here's the, here's the cherry on top. The cherry on top is these sweepstake machines, like this line of business, has a historical connection to the Chicago mob. Okay. <laughs> so this guy, this guy is plaintiff number one, saying, You hurt my feelings and my reputation. Right. This is a face smack. It real it's really a and his lawyer <laughs> in that better. <laughs> again, here's another cherry on top. So his embarrassing. Lawyer, it's terrible. His lawyer in that other case, his criminal defense lawyer. His argument to the jury was, in a nutshell, this was not on purpose. This was stupidity. He literally told the jury that he's stupid because it has to do with trying to de-emphasize intent to defraud right, right, the IRS. Right. You could be <laughs> stupid too, but I mean. This, so, so moral of the story on this lawsuit. You can't I, damage I, I, his I, reputation, right? Because it's already done. <laughs> I, I, that's that's an argument now. I don't know how much further you could be in the gutter on this one, but um, <laughs> right, you know, uh, show me show me real harm, right? And and again, if I was reading statements that said, "Look, this guy gave me an STD," I would be saying something different. I would still say right, you can't right, sue right. Facebook, we can't sue admins, but at least there's some teeth on there, you know. Um, so there's nothing on there that they were def actually defaming him. There is all a matter of opinion. I, I what don't they see or anything. feelings. They feel like he's a certain way. Yeah, which is they still feel a, their like, opinion, right? Yeah, and 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 their opinion is based on their opinion, personal experience, sitting across the table, having a drink, or having you know being in dinner, or. I wouldn't sleep with this guy. One of the girls did sleep with him on the first date, you know, and she made a comment and um, I don't see how, how it meets the criteria uh, of defamation. I just, I just, I'm not seeing it. And so um, I wanted to ask, can you explain now also, I think we have a good understanding of defamation now, but can you explain the difference in slander and defamation and like what, because you hear that thrown around a lot too. And then I know there's a difference, right? For public figures versus non-public figures. Or yeah. So um, there's, there's kind of two uh, versions of defamation. So under defamation, there's a, there's two branches. Okay. Slander is one. Slander is just spoken words that are defamatory. Okay. Libel is written words. That's the only difference. Okay. They both, follow the they're same both defamation. They're both defamation, okay. same elements, same burden of proof, same everything. Okay. Um, most of the cases that I deal with are libel. I, I don't deal with somebody said this unless it's recorded and it's broadcasted somewhere. Um, the public figure one is interesting. So public figure defamation is basically this. If I am suing somebody else and I am a public figure, we'll talk about what that means. 
my burden of proving defamation goes from a negligence standard. Usually, you know, it's, it's a negligence standard. You have to show that a reasonable person wouldn't have said this. You know, you breach the reasonable person standard. It jumps to malice. You have to show malice. And if they have ill intent, basically. Um, I'm laughing because what you said about malintent is exactly what Amber Heard's lawyer argued to the jury in her closing arguments in the Johnny Depp defamation trial. It's totally wrong. Mm -hmm. Totally wrong. Totally, uh, totally a sophomore green behind the ear argument, right? Right. Malice actually means knowledge of falsity or okay. reckless disregard for the truth. So if ah, you are okay. a public figure and you are claiming that you were defamed, you need to show that the other side said something knowing that it was false. You have receipts okay. and they had receipts and they knew it. They said it, or, you know, when you say reckless disregard for the truth, what does that legal mumbo jumbo actually mean? Well, what it actually means is that they had some entertainment of, they were entertaining doubts. They're not sure. And you can show, right. Hey, you know, I'm not really sure about this, but boom. And you don't really have proof of your, of your statement. Right. So okay. the higher standard makes sense too. Cause it's like, if you're a public figure, you're putting yourself in the spotlight. And right. again, rookie lawyers get this wrong who don't play in the space. They think that just because you might be popular, maybe you're not like celebrity, you're not a list. Okay. But maybe you're popular in a particular crowd. Um, maybe you're a popular only fans model, for example. So are we public figures is my question to you. Well, so in certain contexts, you might be, but in other contexts, you may not be. So public figure, there's, there's, a, there's a subtle nuance. There's another sort of step down gradient, what we call a limited purpose public figure. A good analogy would be, let's say you're a doctor with a national recognition, board certified, nationally accredited. You speak at all these conferences on plastic surgery. Um, so for purposes of your reputation in that industry, in that circle, you might be a limited purpose public figure compared to maybe a doctor who's on botched on Netflix, a hugely popular Netflix series where he's, he's talking about botched surgeries and he's putting himself out there. He's probably popular enough to be considered a, 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 a public figure for all purposes. Okay. So then take so, one of our, um, say us, for example. So this man thinks he's, this is just a comment. He's been scammed by us. He goes on the internet and tells everyone that we're scammers. And obviously most of the time they're dumb and they don't really know they're wrong. Right. So in my mind, that doesn't count as anything. Then where I wonder if it changes is if you've presented evidence that it wasn't you. And then they're in that area where they're regarding the truth, like the reckless disregard or whatever. Would that count as anything or no? And I mean, we're obviously not suing people for this. I'm just curious because I don't fully know. What's funny is there, there, there are good analogies to this, which is the case of mistaken identity. Mm -hmm. And... Oh, this guy's a, this guy's a pedophile. I've seen this case. This guy's a pedophile. Look, he, here's his mugshot. Not the same guy. <laughs> you just put right. him out there. <laughs> right. <laughs> if, if you are a news agency, you might, you might get away with that. Okay. Because of the protections, because of the malice standard, because news mm -hmm. agencies get the heightened protection because they're news. Period. And then they have to just post a, re a retraction or a correct A retraction. Right? And, and, and again, Depending on the context, there might be a case there for injury. And, but right. to your point, if somebody's accusing you of being a scammer and it's not you, period, that could be a decent case. Usually um, when somebody just says the word scam, it's not enough for me. I want to see an allegation that's a little beyond it. Like they overcharged my credit card, which is fraud, credit card fraud. Or they used deception and lured me. And they said that we're gonna, they were going to send me videos and I got two pictures. Um, and you so see this a lot. A, I think more of a common one is that we get people that are like, well, the, so the scammers are usually out of Nigeria, right? They take our pictures and then they'll take some videos and then they scam these men. And so then they come attack us like, oh, hey, 
um, you know, you took me for like up to like hundreds of thousands of dollars. Right. Like, <laughs> Your like, name's no, it really Victoria me. or something. And you're like, mm, and it's no. like, no, it wasn't me. Um, you know, I mean, those I usually just say like, you know, listen, you were scammed, blah, blah, blah. There's an IC, go to IC, um, FBI, file an IC3 report, you know, um, you talk to the police department. It wasn't me. I don't really get too concerned about that. I mean, I did have a guy that then accused me of doing something like that was defamatory. And then after I told him, no, you're wrong. That's not the case. This is all the evidence that you're you're actually saying. And then you're, he still went on to actually like go on social media and say some damaging things that were defamatory that I was doing illegally. So then we had to step back and be like, hold up. And then um, that I think is more of a, a case when they are saying that you're doing something, I think, illegal. But I think when there's, I don't know how you would... Like if they and say you're like, how would you, and how would you sue like, somebody? No. How would you sue somebody that's like, who, these people don't have money. <laughs> right. And right? I don't want to sue them. I'm just <laughs> curious because it's just so common in our lives. I wonder what, you know, just like, what is this really? Is this something? Because it's, it is very common. Yeah. And, and some and guys do no. go crazy and they attack you on social media and they go on and on and on and on and on. They create new accounts to come after you. It's like. That's, that's the one where. I encourage people like yourselves who have an identity, a presence, a business where you have to police your brand. Mm -hmm. And when it gets to a point where it's not just somebody accusing you of false, but now they're um, creating fake accounts, they're impersonating you and they could be defrauding other people. That is where you have to do something. And what you can do is you can get an injunction. You might be able to get the lower tier injunction, which is an injunction against harassment if they're sending you unsolicited mail and spam. But the injunction I'm talking about is to get them to stop. Right. They're infringing your IP. They're, you know, you can't do DMCAs. You've done 20 DMCAs. Or in some cases, I've had guys and girls say, I don't know who's leaking my images. I right. want to find out. And I've had some very successful stories on this where we go in and with the limited budget, um, we can find out who's behind these anonymous accounts and it's this kid in Cleveland, Ohio, or it's your neighbor, or, you know, we track them down and we get some money, we get our attorney's fees paid for. And above all else, we get the account shut down. Yeah. So then, okay. Now my, then this goes back to the original Facebook thing, which, um, Poindexter mentioned this in the beginning about this Facebook group. And this was not a group just dedicated to her or harassing her. It was a mom's group on Facebook that she and I and a couple other moms actually started many years ago and then gave up the admin over time. And now it's this huge group in our community. And, you know, when her, when she was exposed that group, particularly even some of the admins were in there saying things about her that were factually untrue right? That could be proven to be false. And so I wonder if those things rise to the level of like, you can do something legally against, I mean, this was in the past, but it's something where, you know, for us was interesting um, because they were saying things that were defamatory, not true, can be proven not true. Um, I bet I know what the accusation was because it's probably the most popular one. It Does it have to do with Engaging in sexual acts for money. Is that what, is that what the accusation that was? That was one of them. Okay. Yeah. It's such a popular thing that, right. I mean, look, I, if it were me and I'm in your shoes, I'm going to do something about it. Um, because my reputation is important to me, you know, and particularly in these smaller groups. I mean, look, sometimes it's just about dollars. Sometimes it's about if my name is tarnished in this group, I will make less money. That's still a legitimate reason. Those are damages. Right. In other cases, it's like, it's not so much about the money. It's about, I want people to really know who I am. I don't want my reputation tarnished. Right. And that's been the thing for us more than trying to get money out of people. We make plenty of yeah. money. Um, <clears throat> it's been, we want them to stop doing this and stop saying, you know, harming us by saying this stuff. And, and you know what? It, in cases like, particularly for people who are listening to you who are, similarly situated where they're content creators of any sort on OF or other platforms, YouTubers, you would be surprised what a non, and I'm talking about a non dog shit demand letter, a well-written legitimate demand that itemizes the facts that tells them this is why I'm going to come after you. 
a well-written demand would do. It, if you know who's doing it, you can send them a direct demand letter. Again, legitimate, outlines the law and the facts. You would be surprised how frequently that alone will work and shut people up. Because most people are keyboard warriors. We all right. have them, right? Yeah, a good cease and desist, right? <laughs> yeah. But I've seen, again, again, I've seen some dinosaur shit cease and desist letters that are three lines long, <laughs> nothing makes sense, or chat GPT wrote it. Right. You know, download it off oh, the internet. Oh, gosh. You know, this is why having a good inter- attorney is so important. Like it's our so critical. entertainment attorney, for example, he will be like, no, that's, can't do that. Or no, this, you know, he will not. Plus he just doesn't want to waste his time, which I appreciate, but he's very honest. And like, now nah, you just need to let that go. Like I had a great divorce attorney, for example, because she told me the truth and mm-hmm. gave me realistic, good advice instead of getting me fired up to go like a shark kind of attorney would. So I'm, I really see the value. And I don't think a lot of people even understand that there are really wonderful lawyers that will give you good advice. And sometimes the best advice is you got to let it go. I couldn't have said it better. I mean, look, this is my profession. It's what I do. I, I decline cases all the time. People get mad. Oh, right. you don't believe me? What's wrong with my case? And they come back six months later, you know, after they've shopped other lawyers, right? And, you know, all these other lawyers are willing to take my case, but I wanted you... And I'm like, listen, I don't want you to pay me even two thousand dollars. I, I just, I'm not going to take your money. Right. I can't help you. And people legitimately get mad. Um, yeah, but to me, I'm like, that's a good lawyer. Exactly. Like, and that's what that's the one yeah. of the things I actually liked about you. Like when we first met you years ago, was I'm like, yeah, it's a good lawyer. Any lawyer that's just like, hey, this is. I mean, we have to follow the law, right? I mean, it, yeah, right. it might not be fair. You might got your feelings hurt. You don't like it, but it's like at the end of the day, it's like, how can you, what, I mean, also it's like, what are the damages to him? There's all these different, like, there's exactly. a ton of, there's a, it's a whole, it's not just one thing, right? It's like, it's a whole, it encompasses a lot, but an right. attorney that's just like, Hey, listen, this is, I want to try to stay out of court. Yep. And because if you can stay out of court, cause court just costs everybody money. I mean, yeah. and the fact that the chances of you actually winning in court are pretty zero. <laughs> Especially up against a huge company. Like Michael told me before the meta thing, he's like, we will probably lose this. I have some creative arguments that could be good, but you need to go into this knowing you're going to probably lose. And he gave me a dollar amount. And as we went on, he continued to be honest with me. And that was so valuable because I knew what I was doing. I was trying to basically like put up a good fight, even, but that was my decision to spend my money that way. It wasn't him filling my head full of, you know, false hopes that, you know, cost me way more money than it should. So I think people need to really think about that. Like, you know, you don't want somebody that's going to fire any thought you have up because most of our ideas are not good and they're not legally <laughs> sound. So like, yeah. well, <laughs> to me, I look at an attorney and I'm like, I don't know the law. I go to an attorney right. because they're the expert and I'm going right. to pay, I'm going to listen to the expert because he's right. going to give me his expert opinion. Just like, I don't go to my mechanic and asking and tell him like how to do his job. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, It's so there's so many striking similarities to like cosmetic surgeons where you can botch a lip injection. You you can also be the surgeon that says, oh, no, your four inch lips definitely could use more filler and just do them all day long. Or you could be, you know what, you really don't want to do this because if you have to melt them or take them out, it's painful. It might mess you up or I mean, whatever it is. My point is any professional should give you the range of like your options. Like going back to Nico Ambrosio and, you know, are we dating the same guy? If this guy guy sat, and I'm going to be very objective here. He sat across from me in my office, came to Scottsdale, flew in. Like a lot of my clients do. They want to meet Pert and Pert and, or we're on a video. I would say this, suck it up because you're currently in tax court in litigation. <laughs> so think about this. His lawyer knew right. that this tax case was going on. The, the conviction hadn't happened yet. Okay. It That's came ridiculous. Later. I can't but believe anybody took his case. The first thing I do is I ask my client, tell me, are you in litigation? What? Right. Tell me the skeletons. If you don't tell me skeletons, I don't take your case because I need to know what I'm working with. Because in right. defamation, you put your reputation at issue. When we put right. your reputation at issue, the other side gets to ask where the skeletons are buried. So if you come to me, one of the first questions I ask, and I've had some very interesting conversations with everyday people, okay? All the dirt, let's see it. Is it on video? Is it in a text? Is it in a telegram <laughs> right. message? Right. Who knows about it? Your neighbor, who, what? 
everything. And now I'm comfortable. They're comfortable. They're confident. Like right. I, I softened up, you know, I've solidified the weak points. I would have told, Hey, Nico, um, just suck it up and walk away. Okay. Now Spend your money on your tax court. Not but this. don't you find out that a lot of people lie to their attorneys like all, all the, the time. time, like they don't tell the truth. And I'm like, how can you get your attorney to represent you if right. you do not tell them everything? Right. It's <laughs> the same as you got to tell your doctor what medications you're taking because you don't want them to do something that's going to kill you because you didn't tell them your meds. <laughs> right. Or I might exactly. Be pregnant. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. No. Yeah. I, 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 usually the way it happens in litigation is they bleed it slowly. So mm, they don't yeah. overtly lie. Maybe I didn't ask you and you, you, you didn't answer straight. Right. But you don't tell me something that you probably should have disclosed to me until it comes up in a deposition. Right. And I'm yeah. looking at you like this right. while opposing right. counsel <laughs> is breathing. We see that on law and order all the time. Like <laughs> <laughs> Or suits. That stuff happens. And the worst feeling is that you're in a case and opposing counsel passes a paper across the table or now with Zoom deposition, puts it on the screen. I'm like, I have never seen that before. What the <laughs> hell is that? It's got your name on it. Um, worst feeling ever, especially in these cases that I do where reputation is everything. I mean, right. you just got to be honest. And it's privileged. Look, attorneys and clients get to enjoy one of the strongest uh, you know, relationships, arguably stronger than marital privilege. Okay. Attorney right. client privilege. You can keep your attorney from opening his mouth unless you literally say I'm defrauding bank of America from a billion dollars, or unless you say I'm killing my neighbor. How do I do it? <laughs> Very few exceptions, um, to privileged, you know, if you're giving your client advice, tell them, like tell your right. lawyer, you know, sh share with them so they can, you know, help equip you. And if you're a good lawyer, um, you'll, you'll use it to your client's advantage. Good. That's good. This That's is good fascinating. Yeah. Hey, so I know you have to go here in a second, but um, give us a little spiel about what else you guys do there at your law firm. Yeah. So uh, RM Warner Law. So we're a boutique firm. We we all things internet law, all things e commerce. So imagine you're a content creator, you're an entrepreneur, you're launching a software or tech company. Um, we can do soup to nuts in terms of uh, helping you. Right, launching your business, terms of service the basic things, incorporating, or maybe you're buying an existing business. We can do all that. The sexier stuff is the stuff we're talking about. The online you know, defamation, revenge porn, leaks, content creators getting their reputation smeared on YouTube. That's our secret sauce. And we uh, handle cases nationwide. If we have to get into court um, in a jurisdiction where I'm not licensed, we get local sponsorship. So I've litigated... Chicago, I've litigated in, in upstate New York. I'm in Florida right now. I'm in Southern California, uh, Texas, Nevada. I mean, we're all over. Um, so yeah, and, and of course we do IP protection, the trademarks, the copyrights, all the easy stuff, we do that too. Which is really interesting, I think. Um, I, more creators need to start um, protecting their content and protecting their intellectual property. And I think especially now with... AI coming on and, you know, we're seeing in the news how things are getting like, you know, well, with Taylor Swift, <laughs> sorry, Trace, oh, okay. uh, but that's I mean, that's a hot topic yeah. right now too, right? Oh, yeah. Where even they're talking at Capitol Hill about even rewriting section 230, which would be amazing if they could actually yeah. get, get old and like, you know, maybe start making some of these platforms more responsible for some of the content that is published on their platforms. So, I mean, honestly, I, I want to have you back on because I think IP is actually such a great topic to talk about that we don't talk about it enough as content creators and how right. to protect our our brands, right? I mean- Right, we're doing way more than most people are. Yeah, if you can't protect your brand and you can't protect your content, then, I mean, you really have no business being online. Right. I, I have, and to give you a little perspective, I have creators- who have 15 to 20 million subscribers on YouTube. And when we talk about, hey, this issue came up, I'm like, what's in your arsenal for protection? It's literally nothing. Now you're behind the wheel, uphill battle. And it's like every relationship starts with protection. <laughs> that's, right. a weird, that's a weird thing. Um, right. Nope, 100%. It, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's a double entendre because it's true. You know, it, it, 
everything you, when you start, you launch into creating content, whatever you're doing, OF or YouTube or e-commerce store, talk to somebody who sees this stuff every day yeah. and can say for 200 bucks, 30 minute consultation, or, you know, yeah. something more elaborate, give you honest mm -hmm. advice on what to do. Right. Yep. Yep. That, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. So hopefully we can have you back on because like, there's so much, I think we could talk about like there's a lot. different directions. Yeah. This yeah. Was, <laughs> this was so great. I, I learned a lot in this episode. So. <laughs> like I said, when we started, I'm a super nerd when it comes to stuff, anything I can get my hands on, I'm reading it. I'm, I'm talking to people so I could talk for hours on all the nitty gritty, uh, of, of the internet and doing business online. So <laughs> we just want to give a big thanks to Mr. Muhammad at, with RM warner law they specialize in online marketing and internet business law and we had such a great interview with him hopefully we'll have him on again to talk about all things um intellectual property and maybe some um ai stuff all right so stay tuned because we have some fun stuff coming up our next episode is going to be all things super bowl and the chiefs are going to win sorry to our producer matt mm -hmm. it's a special <laughs> episode coming out on the friday evening is, yes it is uh, and it's going to be a short form just about the super bowl and what are we going to have on there tris snacks because Yay. we didn't have any snacks this time and i'm hungry af right now <laughs> so i got snacks sitting in front of me i didn't get to eat anything and yes we will be back with extra snacks probably because yay <laughs> all right thank you <laughs> bye <laughs>